Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with your weekend video and looking towards next week and uh, some events to watch for next week as well as a, t a technical review of the indices and what I'm focused on in the market uh, right now. So, um, you know, a lot of events last week and, you know, if you kind of look Back at uh, at the week, we had you know not only did we have a, a Syrian uh, missile launch, but we had uh, you know the Fed commenting on the markets and stocks getting a bit overvalued, and then we also had a job report that showed ninety thousand less jobs created than expected. So if you would have told me that in the beginning of the week, and you would have told me where do you think the S&P is going to close, I probably would have said down one percent or so. Um, for the week, we only finished down. 20 basis points. So really remarkable. Um, to me, that just shows me that the market it does not want to go down, even though there's uh, there's some of these headline risks that are present in, in the market. A lot of the times you get, you know, especially with uh, geopolitical events going on, sometimes you get a knee-jerk reaction. We saw that with futures uh, one particular night. We weren't even down that much. We were down about a half a percent and snapped right back. So um, all in all, uh, you know, considering all those events, and, and I think all on the negative side, you know, the market is holding support. I think that's that's a really good sign. You know, what else is going to take the market down? Well, um, you know, they're, they're, obviously the market also moves more on companies, right? And and we've got in the next couple of weeks, we're well, we're starting earnings season next week, so. Um, you know, I think that's really going to be the test. So while there's headline risk and, and, and a lot of things going on right now, um, I think really it's going. the market is going to be focused on earnings the next couple weeks. So next week, really the bank earnings start. It used to be Alcoa that kicks off earnings season, but since they spun off Arconic, they've kind of changed up their, um, their schedule of earnings. So it's really the banks now. Delta reports, uh, they start next week. This is just the key or the, the top securities that reports. And then we get uh, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citi towards the end of the week. And then we get more, obviously, next week. So I really think that is what the market is going to be fixated. At least the U.S. market is going to be fixated on um, in, in the next couple of weeks. And we could have a lot of chop. Um, we talked about an that in last week's video and you know I, I compared earnings season this quarter to January of of uh, of last um, excuse me uh, January the, in the beginning of the year and and the the price reaction which which was very dismal at, at best so that could be what, what we've what we've got going on I think we want to you know keep keep an eye on those uh those support levels you know obviously if we break down you know it, it's an area to um to take some some exits and, and get out of the market um i actually lowered my exposure quite a bit um just which i which i typically do you know not not because there was a major breakdown in in any support levels i just do this every time we we get into earnings season just on the option side uh because i don't really want to sit in a market that's going to be choppy in, in options, which you know um, in options will have a theta decay. Um, you know that's going to happen no matter what. So um, I did reduce some of some of my longs uh, last week, especially towards the end of last week. Again, this is something that I do every time we go into earnings season. I like to just kind of see how the chips fall in terms of how companies are reporting. And then I kind of revisit. Um, of course, I keep a watch list. And any of those names that I got out towards the end of last week, I could get in very quickly uh, back in uh, to, to those names. So just looking at the spy chart, um, me, for me, the, the level to watch is 234, 234.41 in spy. That's the bottom of value. Um, you could see that we hit that level a couple times last week. We also got that uptrend line. So um, that's really the level that I'm watching, you know, and until we get outside of the value area, I, I kind of think it's, it's we're neutral right now. Um, again, still in an uptrend, but I really like to see when price gets above the value area. Qs continue to paint a little bit different picture. Um, they did get a little bit weak towards the end of the, the week. We've got a really thin value area for the, for the month of April because the price action uh, was traded in a, in a small range mar in March. So, you know, as long as we're above the red line, Line here, um, we're definitely. I, I think you want to stay long. If we happen to uh, do dip a little further and get into value uh, for the for the month, um, I would watch that 130.24 level as your next area of support. 
uh, small caps continue to be where the where the action is at. Um, they are trading in in a in a much bigger range than versus Qs and versus SPY. Um, one thing to note here is that we've been making lower lower highs and lower lows uh, since what since um, since the beginning of March. So we need to come out of that trend. Uh, we're also right at support of the 100-day moving average, which is what we've kind of been. Um, uh, where where we've been kind of moving over the last uh, over the last couple of weeks, I'd also watch 134.62 in IWM. That's also your support uh, with the bottom of value. So that's so that's a quick review of, of the major averages. Um, they just don't see that exciting to me. I'm looking uh, for for opportunities elsewhere in in, in uh, rather than in U.S. markets. Uh, you know, one thing I wanted to point out, which which I have in in this week's newsletter, is how many outflows that we saw last week. So uh, for the week, um, pretty large outflows in U.S. in U.S. Uh, ETFs, nine point one billion dollars. I'm going to get to international ETFs in a second because they're actually seeing a lot of inflows. So when you hear this, I you know I look at this data every, every day, and I monitor this data. You have to be really careful how. Uh, the financial media is quoting these numbers because a lot of times they're not including international uh, international markets and what they're doing. Um, they're also quoting, they say, fixed income rather than treasuries. I think there's a really big difference between inflows into fi fixed income uh, bonds, you know, into fixed area, uh, fixed income areas of the market versus treasuries. So you hear them, you have to really uh, pay attention and, and pay attention to the details of how they're quoting it. Because if you look at, uh, so for, for example, and I'll go to the, um, sorry, I'm going to bounce, bounce around in the newsletter. So apologies for the scroll here. But if you look for the week, uh, where, where, where do I have um, fixed income uh, ETFs posted $3.1 billion last week. But if you look, that wasn't all uh, treasuries. That was actually a lot of, it was emerging market bonds. Um, treasuries were in there, but um, you've got senior loans, you've got high yield bonds, preferreds, a, a little bit of, of everything. So the reason why I address this, this point is because I'm, I'm hearing a lot about a rotation into treasure into fixed income, but it's not really it. You know, I view go, money going into treasuries as kind of a, a, a risk off for the overall market. That's not what we're seeing right now. Um, so just be careful about uh, financial media not being specific in terms of fixed income inflows. Uh, again, most of the outflows that happened last week. And, and U.S. equity ETFs were were spy. Uh, there was also uh, money that came out of financials and came out of industrials and came out of energy uh, ETFs as well. But uh, the spy ETF captured 5.4 billion dollars of the overall headline number. And if you look at this, is just a chart. This is not a chart of spy. This is a chart of the investment in spy. You could see that. Um, Really, this is the first time that we've seen outflows since uh, since kind of the beginning of the year, um, and, and also pre-election. You know, the, there's been a lot of money that has been deployed and, and put into uh, equity U.S. equity ETFs over the last couple months. Um, I do think this is just a little bit of uh, reversion to the mean, um, a little bit of profit taking, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of the weak hands com coming out of the market. And again, I, I also think this is perfectly normal ahead of earnings season. Um, that also typically happens uh, is, is, is well here, you know, because you look at December, December uh, the first couple weeks of January, it, it was kind of the same thing. There was actually more money um, taken out of SPY prior to last uh, last quarter's earnings season as well. So there's kind of a little bit of a trend there. So overall, um, and it just puts puts also into into perspective uh, that $5.4 billion of outflows of SPY, um, SPY is such a large ETF, it's only 2.8% of the fund. So it's not that big. And I think putting the chart together of this investment um, also puts that in pers into perspective. So um, I wanted to talk about TLT. TLT is is the biggest uh, is the biggest treasury ETF, and I wanted to put show the investment of TLT as well. You could see that money is not rushing into bonds here. You know they had one billion dollars. Uh, all government ETFs had. Uh, bond ETFs had $1 billion of investment. That's not that large. So uh, putting that in perspective and, and looking at that TLT chart over the last two years, uh, the TLT investment chart, you could see that 
the money coming in is is more I think a reversion to the mean right now um, so while we've got that up I, I might as well go over the bonds futures or, or the TLT chart you know one, one thing to note here is that we've been coming up against uh, this resistance line um, over the last uh, few months actually since since the beginning of the year so I am not I don't have any position in TLT right now or or in um, or in government bonds because we're we've been moving sideways for basically even more than I've got this trend line drawn um, for probably about the last four months four or five months at this point so I don't see a real major trend here until you know notice this is the 200 day moving average until the market price gets above um, this trend line or breaks below this one, I think you have to be neutral uh, U.S. bonds right now. There's no trend um, in the last four months. So I'll kind of sit on my hands and until we see a break higher or break lower, uh, that's when I'll, that's when I think there's a trade there. Otherwise, I just don't see it. Um, I, you know, we, this was Friday's price action, very similar to what happened in gold as well. Um, and bonds just could not get above this uh, this trend line or didn't didn't hold it. Um, same thing if you look at gold. Watch while I mentioned gold, you know, right at the 200-day moving average, and uh, just just couldn't get above. So that's two two areas to watch, both gold and bonds that I think are important. And um, and I went through the the index levels already to watch. So it's kind of the same thing going on. I'll kind of jump jump to sectors. There's not really much. Um, you know, to talk about here, uh, you know, other than, um, you know, in terms of what we looked at last week to this week, just not a lot of momentum, I would say right now. And um, the other thing that I'll mention about that, that chart where I showed the, the spy outflows for the week, normally when that happens, it's, it's a usually, I would call it a contrarian uh, buy indicator. We don't really have, we don't really see a ton of uh, outflows that happen, you know, maybe it's one or two weeks in a row. Um, again, I, I think if you kind of just wait through earnings season, I, I think momentum is going to come back into the market as long as, uh, you know, the earnings don't end up being horrible. <laughs> well, so we'll see how that goes in the next couple of weeks. But uh, the sectors right now are just not showing where the momentum is right now. Um, you know, just a breakdown. I'm not going to go over performance. That's in the newsletter. But, um, you know, just a breakdown of where, where the money is going into the market. So, you know, I, I kind of examined the fixed income flows and, and the money that went in, which was $3.1 billion. Uh, looks like I'm missing a dollar sign here. But um, really where the money has been going the last couple of weeks is, is into international ETFs. And, and, and this is, uh, I've been kind of saying this to, I'm, I'm blue in the face um, every week, but just a lot of money is being, uh, being deployed into international markets every week. Emerging markets uh, and international developed markets are flip-flopping in terms of uh, who gets more money. Uh, last week, because two weeks ago it was it was the developed markets that saw more money go into them. Uh, last week it was emerging markets, so just about two billion dollars that went there. Um, you could also add a couple of these other areas. So I guess if you add into if you add Europe and you add Japan into the developed markets, that would probably push that um, leading the way, but. You can see Europe and Eurozone. Uh, I just sent out a note on Twitter. I think there's there's about a billion dollars that have gone over uh, into Europe over the last month. This this is a big tr big trend change. There just has not seen that they we have not seen that um, in all of 2016. So um, these are these are really areas that are showing momentum to me. They had a little bit of a pullback last week, so I think it's a pretty good area to um, to get involved in some of these places. Uh, Japan actually saw little inflows, which have been, I think in March, there was mainly outflows in Japan. So some money going back there, some money going into Germany. Um, India continues to see a little bit of inflows every week as well. But um, this is really where I think, you know, the momentum is in, in the marketplace right now. And that's kind of how I've been setting up uh, my portfolio, having just much more exposure to international areas of the market. So, um, you know, the last couple of weeks, uh, what, two weeks ago, I covered emerging market charts. Uh, last week, I covered European charts. Um, you know, I went through a whole, actually, I think the last two weeks, I covered uh, European charts. Uh, you know, the, the EZU, the VGK, which is covers all the countries. And then um, I also covered France, Germany, 
and uh, Spain, Italy, and, uh, and, and a few others. Uh, I also covered European financials as well. So I'm not going to talk about that again to, today. That's in, that's in last week's newsletter, uh, which if you're a subscriber, you, you have all that. Nothing has really changed. Like I said, they pulled back a little bit last week. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good, it's a buying opportunity. Um, last week's pullback. Um, so the first chart that I wanted to talk about in today's and this week's newsletter is uh, is the South Korea ETF. The reason why I'm mentioning this is there was a decent uh, put buyer last week. It did trade a lot of uh, the the puts traded a, a lot of volume last week. It was um, eight times the average volume. So you could kind of uh, draw your own conclusions with this. Obviously, there's there's been a lot more headlines. If tensions increase with North. Uh, with North Korea, I was going to say Carolina, North, North Korea, um, it's probably not a bad idea, I, I think, to have maybe to own a little bit of puts. I did not buy this trade. I just think if there's going to be tensions with uh, North Korea, all stocks are going to go down. Um, maybe South Korea gets hit harder. Um, clearly, somebody was thinking that when they put on this uh, on Friday, this July, over 12,000 contracts, almost 13,000 contracts of the EWY. Again, the South Korea ETF, July 55 puts. They bought those for 81 cents. That's that's about one million. Keep in mind, you know, when you look, I always try to look what's in these ETFs. Um, I know just from past experience that Samsung is a really large weight in this this ETF. So that's why I said, you know, I, it may make more sense to just have just have puts in spy they're going to be a lot cheaper uh let's see if i can bring this up but you look at the holdings of ewy the south korea etf you could see it by far and away samsung is the biggest component so if you know just things to consider before you put the trade on for south korea be, know that you're mainly just you're shorting samsung um or you're shorting a your your position is is the, the biggest chunk of that position uh that you're shorting is samsung so if you're comfortable with that and if you're comfortable with with thinking that something bad is going to happen um then that could be a trade that that you want to put on it could also be an, a a hedge versus uh you know exactly that if there's going to be further things that that come out um in the market geopolitical risks probably a decent uh, a, a decent idea so um that's the first chart um and because this was such a big trade that went up on friday definitely wanted to give it a, its attention from a technical aspect i would watch the 50 day by the way in ewy it has been pulling back a little bit more than any other uh, Asia ETF, you know, I, I look at these every day and it seems like EWI was, uh, was definitely weak last week. Notice it also, uh, it also stalled at this, uh, at this trend line from a couple of years ago, but I would watch a break of the 50 day. Notice you, you have a decent air pocket, uh, down to the 100 and 200 day moving average. Again, the strike that they chose was the 55. So for me, um, Maybe if it, if it does crack this 50-day moving average, that may be where I might decide to put that trade on. Um, and then things that are that are moving up quite nicely. Um, you know, so again, I've, I've talked about emerging markets and I've talked about European ETFs. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Latin America ETFs, which, which falls into the bucket of, um, of emerging markets. But, you know, these are uptrending really nicely. If you look at a chart, which I don't think I have one here, um, but if you if you look at a chart of, of Chile, which is a small weight in this ETF, it's um, it's 11 percent. But uh, some of these areas in, in Latin America are really moving up quite nice. This is a chart of Vietnam, which I'm going to get to. But um, here's the chart of Chile, just really huge outperformance. Again, you know, everybody's fixated on politics. Let's say everybody, the, the, the financial media is fixated on politics. Nobody's talking about, about uh, Chile, which has gone from 30 bucks to 44 uh, since uh, over the last year, basically. So really nice move. You know, if you don't want exposure just straight to Chile, um, the, the reason why I'm showing ILF is because it does cover not only Chile, but it covers Brazil, uh, Mexico as well. I'm looking for a break of this trend line. And um, the reason why I have a three-year chart in here, just to show you where the price has gone from and, and, and where it was back in 2014. So much higher back in 2014. So if we get over this level, I'm looking for a long in this space. Um, also Argentina, 
Um, this is not in the ILF ETF. It's going to be actually be in the next ETF that I talk about. But look at what Argentina has been doing from $22 um, basically in the beginning of the year. Again, this is a five-year chart just to show you what kind of breakout is going on in, in Argentina. But from the beginning of 2017, it was about a $24, now up to $28. So real nice move in this. Um, Argentina is in the, the frontier, uh, frontier Markets ETF. Um, so I would actually, you know, considering that I think this is a little bit extended, look at how far it is above the 50 day. Um, I would rather invest in something like frontier markets. So they're kind of the next, uh, the next level of emerging markets. Uh, these are markets like, um, these are markets like uh, Kuwait, Argentina, Pakistan, Vietnam, Morocco, and Romania. And um, again, I've got a, th this one's a three year chart, one, two, three. And um, you could see the price action again. This used to be a $40 stock and it's 28 right now, bouncing off the, um, the 50 day moving average here quite nicely. So um, I, this is an area that I think is, is um, or has been trending up. And this is an area that I'd rather be in right now um, than the US, which I see is just a lot of chop and maybe a lot more chop through earnings season. Um, and then um, some of these charts that I mentioned, they, they've already started to to catch and, and, and rally pretty hard. Uh, this is one that I'm looking to enter into on Monday. This is the um, the Vietnam ETF, VNM. Um, take a look at that yellow line. That's a 200-day moving average. So, you know, a lot of these names, uh, you know, I've been waiting for them to get above the 200-day moving average. And it looks like uh, the Vietnam ETF just crossed the 200-day, or is basically right at the 200-day moving average, um, closed on Friday. So, um, this market trades, you know, in the overnight session, so we'll know uh, by Monday morning if um, this is going to be firmly above the the 200-day moving average. If it is, I'll probably look to start a position in BNM. I don't have anything on right now, but again, um, the reason why I show a long-term chart is, you know, maybe this if it does pop above the 200-day moving average, maybe it'll start to retrace some of that downward trend. And then what I like about this too is you have your defined. Uh, you have your defined support, you have your stop uh, price, which you could put right below the 200 day moving average. If it does not continue on, you can get right back out and, and most likely will not have a big, uh, a big loss if it actually retraces uh, below that 200 day moving average. So um, that's uh, just, uh, well, I guess we went 22 minutes, uh, but that's a review of uh, some of the things that I'm looking at. Again, I, I continue to be focused more on international markets than what's going on in the US. I just don't see a lot of momentum right now, um, especially the last couple of weeks, um, especially the, the money that's been coming out of, of the US in terms of uh, ETFs. And um, I want to be where the, where the momentum is. I want to be in, in, in international stocks, which I think uh, many of them have a long way to go to, to retrace uh, their highs back a couple of years ago. So uh, thanks for watching today's video and uh, good luck with the trading week. And I'll see you in the trading room on Monday. Thank you, everybody.